Hello all, and welcome back to another walkthrough video. Today, we're taking a look at the submissions for the March build competition on the Discord server, and that is drop pods. As you can see, we've got the three standard drop pods as reference. We are going to be making replacements for these, with the only major change being that the space pod, this big one I'm standing on, that's going to have to be small grid for the new sets. So everyone's submitting a set of at least three drop pods, one for the moon, drop pod, this guy over here. Replacing that, we're replacing the space one with a small grid version, and we're going to be replacing this guy right here, the planet drop pod. The motivation behind replacing these ones here is because we have a server that we're running for our Discord server. We have an SE server, and I think it would be a really nice touch to have a mod with custom respawn pods, so that when you log into the server and you spawn for the first time, you have something new to look at, you have something new to work with, and it just makes the start a lot more interesting. So, I am actually going to be making a video on my main channel, my main SE channel, that is a tutorial of how to set up one of these mods, how to create it from start to finish, and what kind of things you want to look for in making drop pods and stuff like that. How to do the whole process, so if you're interested in that, head over to my main channel. Links for that will be in the description and on the end card, so it should be easy to find. Also, something I forgot to mention, we will have voting in the Discord for winners for this competition, and the winning set, you will vote on an entire set of ships, not an individual ship, but the winning set will be the set we use on the SE server. So I will make a mod, and if at all possible, we will put that mod on our server, and these will be the ships that you spawn in with on the server. And with that all out of the way, let's start looking at our submissions. We got four sets of drop pods for this competition. I'm just gonna start with the top right here, as we go through these, um, I will always have the name of the creator of the whole set in the top left corner, and I will have names of the individual vehicles as well. I don't, I'm not going to remember them all off the top of my head, so I'm just going to go through them and say, this is the moon one, this is space, and this is for planets. But the name will be in the top left corner if you're really interested. Our first set of vehicles here is submitted by PhD Composer. This is our moon pod. It's got... Very similar stuff that you would start with the vanilla system, I believe. Survival kit. Things don't seem to be all hooked up, which is completely fine for a starter pod. We do have parachutes and whatnot in case you drop in. I think when you start on the moon, you don't actually drop in, but this could then be used as a drop pod for a planet, which wouldn't be terrible. I'll just jump in the seat and see what all blocks we have available to us. Also, are the inventories filled? Okay, there's parachutes and parachute hatches, at least there's that. There aren't any tools or anything else, but that's okay. Got some batteries, the wheels. Um, yep, no thrusters. They decided to opt for no thrusters. The default moon pod does give you the thrusters that you would get on a planet, oddly enough. I don't know why they do that, but yeah, they decided to remove them for their version. We are also going to try these out. So let's, let's take the moon pod down to the moon. I will be taking all the moon pods down and just driving them briefly on the moon. The space pods will take for a spin in space. And the earth drop pods, I think I'll just, I'll do a, a test landing with them. So we're going to have a bit of cutting and jumping around. Let's go to the moon and let's test this one out. All right, here we are on the moon. And I took the liberty of pasting in all the rovers at once just for making my job a little bit easier. But we're going to just focus on this one. We will get to those in turn. Here's a little reference. This is the original moon drop pod. It's just the earth drop pod with something slapped on the front. I can't believe that this is the official one. It just seems so janky that they would use the same thing and just like makeshift slap a, uh, a thing on it. Anyway, <laughs> enough ranting about that. Let's take this for a test drive. We got parking brakes. Okay. Uh, going to third person here. What's my speed limit in this thing? I'm cruising. Feels pretty good to drive. It's weird driving in uh, low gravity, not gonna lie. It's not something I do very often, so. Yeah, we got decent bumpers on it, and uh, I don't think there's gonna be any issue with um, hitting the ground too hard, even going off like major jumps with this, just because we have such low gravity. And, uh, look at that. 
and we, we have pretty good clearance. It's kind of interesting the way it sits on the ground with the wheels like that. Kind of like it. But it seems to drive just fine. Let's see if we can go up this hill. Of course we can. Whoa. I don't know how the, uh, the default pod drives around on the moon, because honestly, I don't think I've ever done a moon start with it. Because I just don't do that kind of thing. But this thing feels pretty good. Ah! Took a little damage there. I don't know to what. But I don't think anything vital broke. Be a lot easier to drive if I had my view set up right. Alright, I think that's good for that. We'll just leave it parked here. It does have an ore detector on it. That's nice. I'm just curious. I have to check this. Oh, look at this. Extra brownie points here. They took the ore detector and they turned up its stupid range. I don't know why it is default on half range, but they fixed that for you. So <laughs> quality control was on point today for this one. A little bit of a backflip going over this canyon. It's kind of fun driving on the moon. It's really slow though, honestly. I'd probably just slap thrusters on this bad boy right away if I was actually playing the game and then fly. But it works pretty good. All right, here we are back in space. This is the space pod for this set. It is kind of interesting using the Weldless armor. I never use that, but it does look kind of nice. We've got our survival kit in the middle here. Uh, what is this? Oh, a giant thruster on the back. That's kind of nice. Two small thrusters to each side. Four forwards. Uh, it looks like two up and two down. So this should fly pretty nicely. We have an H2O2 generator, our um, antenna, and ore detector. Don't know why I couldn't think of the name of that block. Let's check some more stuff. Got the battery. Ore detector is tuned again. Very, very good, very good. Let's take this for a quick test flight. I'm just going to paste in a new one to do that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Inertial dampers are off. Zoom. This should have some real good kick to it with the big thruster on the back. Not bad at all. Fly this over to an asteroid. Hang out. Feels pretty good. It's actually using a similar theme. This set uses a similar color theme to the original set. How does it feel in first person? Not bad. Very unique. And it has some really good kick to it. I mean, this this thing flies around very comfortably, which is nice. I don't think, um, yeah, stuff's not really hooked up conveyor-wise. And actually, now that I think of this, okay, yeah, you do have access to it at least. So you just park this close to uh, whatever you're going to be drilling in right away, and then plop stuff in there and start building, which is pretty nice. I don't see a easy hookup location to like attach a drill or anything, but it is just a starter pod. You probably won't be keeping it for super long unless you merge block it, but uh, yeah, it feels pretty good. Uh, I have lights. I don't have any hot bar set up, but I have lights. Okay, we're on. Okay. Feels pretty good. Let's check out the Earth Drop Pod, and for that we're going to go down to the planet, and we are going to just drop in with it. I want to make sure, before I do that though, that it has a parachute, and the parachute is set to auto-deploy. Auto-deploy at 300 meters. Okay, this is tuned. Those are not the normal numbers, so I'm just going to leave it as is. I'll look at the blocks right here real quick before we go do that. We have some searchlights, uh, small cargo. This is normally what you have on your the default one, which is all very good. Or detector. Yeah, this is all pretty much identical to the uh, 
the initial one. It has one less magnetic plate, but that's not really an issue. Take a look at it down. Take a look at it out here before we take it down. Feels pretty good. Everything's kind of packed in there neatly. It does not have any thrusters on it, which is a uh, interesting change from the normal planet pod. The normal planet pod has four atmospheric and one hydrogen thruster on it. And it does look like this one is uh, hooked up a little bit. I'm just gonna see if I can put stuff. It's got it's got stuff in an inventory too, and uh, this is hooked up at least. So it does look like this one is piped all together, which is good. Now let's take it down to the planet and drop it. Whoa, actually before we do that, uh, I just noticed something. There's parachutes in the small cargo container, but those do not have access to go to the parachute hatch. So uh, that is actually a problem. Um, so there's no parachute in the parachute hatch right now, and the parachute hatch apparently is not connected to the small cargo container. It looks like it's connected to something, but uh, it's, it's not the cargo container. So let's get in this cargo container here. Steal one of those. Can we put one in through here? No, what is... Is the parachute hatch just not connected? We're going to dismantle this a little bit. Uh, no. So the parachute hatch is not connected. Um, minor problem. Uh, you just change this block write her to one of these maybe and then put a parachute hatch on let's get the color right go like that and we'll auto deploy at 300 which is what theirs was set to before Auto deploy at 300. Did I say 400? Yeah, I said 400 while typing 300. Crazy. Um, is this connected now though? Because I'm I'm still not certain that it's connected. Yeah. Okay. So it's connected now. Um, that's a minor change that uh, you know definitely needed to be made. But we will copy this one and we will take this one down and try it on the planet. All right, here we are in the drop pod, dropping into Earth. You can see our height slowly or rapidly decreasing, I should say. It's going to go all the way down to 300 and then the parachute's going to open. That gives us three seconds to decelerate at 100 meters per second. Um, will it work? Oh, easy. Parachutes are overpowered. This is why you should always use them. How stable is this? Uh, it's tilting a little bit. Not bad, though. Seeing this parachute work at uh, 300 meters, I probably should turn mine down. I think mine's set to 500 meters, but 300 meters is plenty. And this is going to land just fine. 7, 8 meters per second. Hop on out here. Uh, it looks like the landing gear is not set to auto lock, which is a deviation from the standard settings, but it does make sure that you land nicely then and you don't just like lock in funny. That can be an issue though if you land on a steep slope where you want to lock before you start rolling. Um, yeah, just something to keep in mind. It might be an issue. It might never be an issue, honestly, um, but it could be one. I like that you can climb on top of it very easily using these little uh, sloped bits. Then you can come up here and destroy a bunch of the junk that you don't want and start building stuff that you do want. That's pretty cool. I think that's going to be it for this set. Let's move on to our next one. The next set we're going to look at are all the ships designed by Kitsy. They've decided to go for four of them. We have the Moon Pod, the Space Pod, the Planet Pod, and the Waterworld pod. 
which is kind of just a hypothetical because we don't have that in the standard game and I don't think this is set up for use with the water mod as far as I can tell it's not it's just kind of a neat thing they decided to add on they all have the same kind of uh, shape on the exterior but they have all been kitted out with slightly different setups you can see the space pod has thrusters and this one has wheels and this one has landing gear and whatnot so let's jump into the moon pod first all right moon pod driving test for kitsy's rover i'm a little suspicious that this wheel setting is not ideal it certainly gets them to sit on the ground nicely but whoa, awkward okay that was just a, uh, a first try on standing in there uh, you got a decent view of the horizon and you can always drive in third person which I think I'm gonna just go ahead and do oh we have a bunch of stuff on the hotbar here I didn't check the hotbar on the other one but this one's got a bunch of stuff oh and that folds wait what oh you do both of them that's touching the wheel is that gonna be okay we're gonna find out watch this the wheel stops turning eh, 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 eh. nine Oh my lord, <laughs> what is happening? Oh, these are, these are wheel. I'm not certain why you would want to do that with your wheels, but it's an option. <laughs> I guess that lets you get underneath it and do maintenance on the bottom, which is really interesting. That's, uh, that is not... <laughs> something I was expecting. I'm not entirely certain what the purpose of that is. Maybe that also lets you go through like a certain size gate or something. All right, I think I hit the negative a little bit ago, but I discovered a few things uh, I just want to correct myself on. Um, the hot bar is it's not wheel speed. I thought that was wheel speed right on number four and five. It's the wheel height offset and that lets you lift and lower that and when they're lifted this this back thing is not an issue right so yeah I take back what I said about that that's completely fine anyway let's get back to testing this vehicle there's a parking brake I do have gyros and they're pretty strong because it lets me do this so you don't have any problem with uh, landing upside down with this rover that's for sure it seems like the back wheels just aren't turning half the time I'm not entirely certain what the deal is with that I think it might be because they are on subgrids and if I'm not mistaken there is not a subgrid control script on this grid so those wheels which are these two here I wonder if I just turn their power down, um, they won't, because they seem to be almost acting like brakes, right? Because they like kind of don't want to turn, or maybe. Maybe that was a mistake. Yeah, I don't know what the deal is with those. But uh, they don't seem to be helping you drive because they're on subgrids and there's no subgrid control script. So this vehicle is a little bit difficult to drive around, I'm not gonna lie. It's a little, little tricky. It does move, but I don't know if I would actually wanna <laughs> drive this around too much. Let's look through what other blocks we got here. We do have air vents. You do at least have a nice pressurized interior with this one. Lots of gyros. Or detector, as usual. And uh, this one is not cranked up, but we're going to do that. Parachute. Does have that option. Let's drive it in first person for a little bit, just because we can. We're going to take it off a little bit of a jump. Just to, just to try it. And I do like driving in third person much more than first person with this one. Can I even get up this hill? I feel like I'm doing it wrong. I feel like I'm driving this rover wrong. 
see my front wheels are off the ground and I, ha I don't have enough traction to like go forwards up the hill All right at least I can do this okay I'm satisfied again let's move on to the next Ooh, look at that I just stalled out in a wheelie are one of the gyros set to uh, override? I might just be crazy. Ah, neither of the gyros aren't set to override. Why am I balancing like this? That's crazy talk. Anyway, let's move on to the next one from this set. And that is the space pod. Here is our space pod. We've got thrusters, ion thrusters, and I don't know why this reactor is on the outside, I'm going to be completely honest with you. There's plenty of room on the inside, and it doesn't seem like it's even hooked up. This might have been just something that was slapped on to get this going. I don't know if this is actually supposed to be here, but it's got a reactor there. Uh, the ion thrusters are all around it. Uh, same setup on the inside as far as I can tell. It has an air vent, so we need to check if this is actually airtight. because. It looks like it should be, but I haven't actually checked yet, so we're going to check that right away. Alright, I'm inside. It says it's green, so it is pressurized. I'm guessing it just doesn't have ice. Can I... Um, it's green, right? So it says it's pressurized. I don't know exactly why it's not uh, filling with air, but it should be. because uh, this space is pressurized. See, it changes colors when I open the door. When I close the door, it uh, is fine. We'll jump in here, we'll quick take a look through the blocks, and then we will take it for a test flight after that. Looks like pretty much all the same stuff, except that it has uh, a good number of ion thrusters. It looks like 12 of them. Take a look at the outside. We've got four forwards, two backwards, um, yep, two up. You have two up, and we have the hydrogen thruster still going up, which is good. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's take this for a test flight. I'm going to just copy and paste it for that. Oh, i got to turn my thrusters on. Oh wait, I have a hotbar. Kitsy actually uh, set up their hotbar, which is nice. Not everyone did that. Wait, is the ore detector tuned? <laughs> I'm going to check this on everything, I swear. Is there an ore detector, and is it tuned? It's not tuned. They set up their hotbar, but they didn't turn up the ore detector. That's, that's kind of funny to me. And they put these bad boys on a different key. It's kind of cool that they're still an option, but... uh. They run a different key for the other one. Interesting note. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't change anything. You're rarely going to be pushing those buttons anyway. It flies fine. It's not like missing thrust in one direction or something. So I guess I, I would never complain about this. I see smoke, though. All right. I found what was smoking. It's this small conveyor. For some reason... These conveyors are broken. I don't exactly know why. Also, yeah, so these conveyors were connecting the O2H2 generator to the hydrogen engine. Also, an interesting note, the hydrogen engine Oh, it's, no, it's hooked up, okay. So, I was going to say, it's not like it's not all hooked up, but it's all hooked up. But yeah, it, it's these uh, these guys, which I guess aren't actually necessary at all, because, oh no, this one is necessary. <laughs> this one's vital, because this is actually what was hooking up the O2H2 generator. So, yep, those are a little bit broken. If you spawn in with this vehicle, uh, you got some stuff to fix. I've already looked at a couple things on all of these sets, and there is something on every single one of these sets that uh, 
could be could be fixed and that's not saying that that's not intentional like that might be intentional specifically for this set over here this is kind of like a rusty set um, there's stuff that needs to be fixed and that is 100 percent intentional on that set i have some buggy stuff happening with mine uh, that one had some buggy stuff and i don't know maybe this is intentional for this set so just an interesting note i think that's all i'm going to say about this one it is pretty much the same as the rover it's just the the thrusters and it flies fine it doesn't have as much pick up and go as the smaller one up there but it does fly all right let's try out the lander all right here we are uh, dropping in with kitsy's vehicle um some settings had to be changed to get this to work first of all i forgot to change the hydrogen thrusters the hydrogen thrusters are on they should be off for dropping in. I also had to add a parachute to the parachute hatch because there was not one. And I had to set up the parachute hatch to auto deploy and deploy at, I decided to go with 400 meters because uh, why not? But yeah, so this is it falling in. It has a subgrid, so it's tilting, but the parachute should open and we should be fine. There we go. And uh, it's actually extremely level. So good job on the parachute placement there. You can kind of see the stuff through here, which is kind of nice. Very comfortable landing at 12 meters per second. There we go. The landing gear on this one is set to auto lock. So it locked right away. Of course, at a bit of a slant, but that's okay. Don't have to worry about rolling down something. You can jump up in the back here. We've got access to all sorts of stuff which is uh, interesting yeah that's the parachute I put in there um, I guess we're in uh, creative mode so maybe I didn't actually have to put that in but that's a change that would have to be made for this to actually function in a world let's, uh, let's look at everything else this has to offer we do have hop bar set up which I always appreciate you can fold up your little wing there which is nice fold it back down too we have hydrogen engine on and off let's just look at all the blocks that are in this two connectors t-spam as usual we got beacon antenna battery that's all standard fare a couple doors which will be good materials for building something else a couple gyroscopes no uh, you do have the two hydrogen thrusters there's no atmospheric thrusters, which normally a uh, earth pod would have, but you do have two hydrogen thrusters, which as we've seen is enough to make this fly. So with a little bit of ice in your O2H2 generator, you might be able to fly this vehicle. I'm going to say it's probably too heavy though, um, because there is no hydrogen tank, right? Yeah, so there's no hydrogen tank. So you would have to be flying off the ice you get from the hydrogen or the O2H2 generator. I don't think that's going to produce enough for your two thrusters to actually lift all this weight. Don't quote me on that, but that's a educated guess. You could, of course, always uh, start up a base and build a small um, hydrogen tank and then fill that up, and then you would be able to fly with this. But actually, you'd probably scrap a lot of this stuff and build the small hydrogen tank out of, uh, say, all these different like hinges and, and rotors and whatnot. I have a feeling you, you'd be able to do it. Again, don't quote me on it, but I have a pretty good feeling for that. So that's your tank. Not bad. It, uh, it works just fine once you do those couple changes to uh, actually make the parachute deploy and have a parachute. Got your ore detector there. Antenna here. Similar setup to the other designs, so not much else to say about that. Let's move on to the next one. And that would be the last one for Kitsy here, which is the hypothetical water world setup. Everything is pretty much the same for the box part of the ship, the interior part. The exterior has a few changes made to the bottom primarily. You've got a little bit of pontoon out here, and you've got the blue part underneath here. It's a little bit damaged. This person ran ashore at least once. And they also have hydrogen thrusters uh, in the bottom of their boat, which I think is questionable. 
They got a little rudder here on a hinge. That's kind of cool. Is that something I can control from the control seat? It'd be a neat feature. Just throw it out there. No, but you can still fold this up. And it's it's uh, really wants to get in there. <laughs> That's all right. Pretty cool. Um, we're not going to spend too much time on this, though. We've pretty much seen this all before. Let's move on to the next set, which is going to be the ones that I created. This is uh, this is what I decided to go with. Extremely simple designs. I just wanted something that would feel comfortable to start in and basically just to have a different look for the vanilla experience. There's a few changes I made overall. Um, the rover for the moon, I decided not to have any thrusters on it. Usually you get the atmospheric and the hydrogen thruster, which lets you just turn into a spaceship right away and fly off. I decided to go with not having that for my moon vehicle. My space vehicle is just super generic, um, has the same exact kind of stuff that you would get in the standard plant drop pod or moon drop pod, only in a small grid space pod. And uh, I didn't really change hardly anything for this, it's just a different look. So it's primarily cosmetic, but it does give you a little bit different experience for all of these. So let's jump into the moon pod and give it a try. And we're back on the moon to test out another rover. I am the only one I think that went for six wheels. I kind of like six wheels. So let's give it a try. Parking brake was engaged. Why? Something is uh, definitely strange today. Oh no, parking brake was disengaged, okay. I'm just playing the game wrong today. I should probably take a break. Oh, we're going to roll around in this bad boy for a little bit. I'm not going to lie, I didn't actually do any tuning on this for the moon. I just kind of figured it would work fine on the moon if it worked fine on Earth. But uh, I'm finding out that that's, that's probably not the case. I'm turning way too fast, and I would totally roll sideways with this. Zoom. But there's plenty of gyros, so even if you turn sideways, you should be able to to fix yourself. Zoom. And with all these wheels, there's exactly zero chance of bottoming out, as long as you land with your wheels first. So I'm doing more flying than rolling with this, that's for sure. We're going to hold space to uh, try to stop flying when we land. Ah, there we go. Yeah, I wanted to add the extra wheels um, so that you really had zero chance of bottoming out. Because that's not fun. We're going to head up that big hill we went up with the other rover. See how it goes with this one. Um, and we're not going to really drive there. We're, <laughs> we're going to fly there, apparently. I wonder if I can drive up this. Space bar, space bar. Oh, okay. We're going to get a little, a little bit of a run up. Make sure we don't start flying on our run up. I could probably reduce the friction on this, and it would be much better for the moon. Okay. Start a wheelie a little bit early. Yes, yeah, this, this is no issue at all. I really, you know what? I don't, I don't like driving on the moon. You might as well be flying, because. You're basically flying without control when you're trying to drive on the moon, right? You spend 90% of the time in the air with no control, and then you spend a little bit of time on the ground. I suppose if you go slowly enough, you could spend more time on the ground, but nobody wants to go slow on this game. <laughs> you're already limited to 100 meters per second. Nobody wants to go slower than that. At least I don't imagine they do. Maybe you do. I could be wrong. There's nothing wrong with that if you like going slow. Everyone likes different things. Alright, I'm pretty satisfied. This feels fine to drive. It is a little bit grippy, and it's a little bit more likely to flip over, I think, than the first rover we tried. But you do have um, you do have control with the gyros, so 
Like, I'm going all over the place and I'm not actually flipping it at all. Reduce the friction on the wheels and you'll be golden. Let's move on to the next bit. This is my setup for the space pod. It is pretty much the same along the core as the moon pod. Yeah, so you can see on the side, the moon pod, I actually didn't make note of this, but I did decide to give my moon pod a hydrogen engine and a hydrogen tank. Now, I didn't start with any thrusters on it, but I am giving you the ability to mine some ice and get fuel and refill yourself that way instead of doing a solar panel or something that you'd normally have to do. Uh, I thought that was a, a, a good option, honestly. The little cargo container there. And uh, that is all exactly the same right down the middle for the space pod. Except the space pod has the thrusters. It doesn't have hydrogen thrusters. You're basically just starting off using hydrogen as a fuel source to produce power. And then you've got some batteries, and with the batteries you can power your thrusters here. Which is uh, kind of a different take on the space pod. Uh, you do have access to these in the back, very similar to how you have it there and how you have it here. All of my pods are kind of set up similarly, so if you spawn in one, you kind of figure out how to work the next one too. Not much to interact with on the bottom here. Uh, just thrusters and whatnot. This is piped all the way through, so if you want to put a drill on this right away, you can put a drill right on the front here and then uh, drill with the ship and kind of how the vanilla pod you'd normally stick the drill right on where the uh, survival kit is. I think everybody pretty much does that. Uh, this gives you the option to put it on right under your cockpit and uh, continue using your ship like that. Mine wherever you want. Produce stuff. Do whatever. Pretty chill. Let's take this for a test flight. Just paste it in. It's not fast. And that's kind of what I was going for. Um, it's just a different different take. Uh, the, the first one we saw was really quick to accelerate. I just wanted something that worked kind of as like a bare minimum. Something that you'd have as a starter pod. You probably don't want to keep it around for long. You want to modify it right away because it's, uh, it's a little bit slow. But I think that's a good a good place to start. Is uh, functional, but not something you want to keep. That was my motto for designing my my stuff. It works, but you don't want to keep it for very long. Moving on from that, um, well, I guess let's look at the let's look at the blocks real quick. I'll just I'll just scroll through this. It's nothing spectacular. You got a bunch of batteries and the engines and stuff. I talked about the important things. Let's move on to the lander. All right, we're down on Earth and we're gonna try um, a drop with this pod, but I just want to tell you beforehand what's supposed to happen because I've tried this a couple times now and for some reason it's not working right. I tried it about a million times on uh, Mars. I think that's where I was when I was designing this and it worked perfectly every time there. But it seems to be having a real issue on Earth here. So what's supposed to happen is you drop down and then that sensor on the bottom detects when the ground gets close. And it detects in a very small area. So you're supposed to get almost to the ground and then the alarm starts going off. The alarm goes off for like 10 seconds and then the front hatch here pops off and falls forwards. And that should happen when you're already on the ground. Now, I've been trying it on Earth here and the alarm keeps going off like a kilometer above the ground. And then the hatch pops open and it falls and it falls weird. and It's a little bit awkward, right? But uh, that's not what's supposed to be happening with this. And I think it's just because uh, sensors, when they're trying to detect voxels, um, sp especially for like a planet or something, it has this like rough estimation of where the voxels are. When I say rough estimation, I mean approximately within a kilometer there might be a voxel on this planet. Um, I did not realize it was that inaccurate until I started trying to do this build, but uh, let's just try it out. Uh, if something crazy happens, something crazy happens, this build might have to be tweaked, but uh, we're just giving it a try. We'll give it a try, we'll give it a try. It's kind of awkward to get in here. This is actually airtight. Oh my gosh. It's really hard when I'm talking to get in here, but yeah, you're sitting in this pod 
you got air and everything, even though, uh, you know, there's an opening. Dropping down. The alarm should not go off until I'm basically touching the ground. So we'll see if that works. Also, there we go. I was going to say, the parachute better open. It's going to drive me crazy if it doesn't. So good so far. Oh, no. Okay. Well, the front hatch popped off and I didn't even hear an alarm. <laughs> it seems to have some, some minor bugs. But uh, now we're just landing like this, I guess. Which is a little, uh, a little bit awkward. <laughs> Definitely could use some tweaking. Anyway, you do end up landing with this. Uh, you have a smashed front bit, which I guess is cool and all. Um, the nice thing about this is you are starting with, uh, theoretically, as long as this doesn't pop off too soon and you don't crash and burn because of the bugs, you're coming in in a slightly faulty uh, drop pod and you have uh, you do have a merge block there and a merge block there. So I thought that was kind of a, a convenient feature. The earth drop pod is the most convenient of my drop pods because I think uh, planet starts should be the easiest starts. So you do start with the standard four of uh, the atmospheric thrusters. And on the bottom, I do have a hydrogen thruster. As you can see, everything is all piped together in this one. So uh, here's the little cargo here, and you can access all the other stuff. I don't know. Okay, there we go. Now it's showing up. But you start with the standard gear. The uh, survival kit did survive, which is nice. You didn't completely crash. And I have these set to auto lock so that if you land on the slope, this is a little bit top heavy, and it might want to roll if you don't have it already auto locking. One large battery, which is also exactly like the initial drop pod. It's very similar to the initial drop pod in what you get, except you do get um, a couple of these merge blocks already here. Uh, it'd be a little bit difficult to uh, merge it when they're up there. You might have to move around, but yeah. Uh, pretty basic, pretty straightforward. I guess I'll look at the specifics of everything. I damaged a few things, but uh, not a big deal. You do have an ore detector. A couple timer blocks and whatnot, so I guess you have a few more resources to farm from this one. And the... Uh, Thrusters are already kind of set up in a convenient way for flight, if you do want to use them to fly around and find your friends or whatever. There is not a remote control, but all you'd have to do is grind a few things down, build the remote control, build the gyroscope, just like you would with the vanilla drop pod, and then you can fly around. Pretty basic start. I like it though. There's also heavy armor right on the bottom that uh, you can get a couple metal grids from if you really want some metal grids for something weird, like another hydrogen thruster or a few more hydrogen thrusters. Thought that was a neat, uh, kind of like sneaky feature to add. Easy way to get metal grids really early to build some uh, hydrogen thrusters. All right, I think that's going to be it for all of my builds. Let's move on to the next person. And that brings us to our last set of submissions. And this is going to sound a little bit crazy, guys, but I have my son set to move um, to take an entire day to go around the circle, to go around the plane, right? And the sun is actually off now from where I want it to be because it has been four hours since I started recording this video. I've been just leaving the game run in the background and I've been editing the video as I go and recording stuff because it's kind of jumping all over and it's honestly a little bit easier to edit and record at the same time in that case. But yeah, it's been four hours, so I gotta go fix the sun, even though it takes a literal day for the sun to go all the way around in this world. There we go. The sun is approximately back where it was when I started. I've actually changed the sun twice now. Like two hours ago, I changed it again to, to get a good sun angle on things. So like, see how much clearer it is to see these now? Anyway, the last set here is by Remarkable, and they went with uh, a very like rusty, beat up kind of look to theirs. 
which I think is really cool. They also put a bunch of lore in the Discord for <laughs> these different vehicles when they submitted them, and that was a really good read. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, check it out. Um, yeah, let's jump in. I think there's actually more lore in these two, yeah. There's notes from the salesman. This goes with the lore, I believe, that they put in the Discord. I actually haven't read these notes yet, but I'm just going to flip them all open. You can pause it real quick if you do want to read these. This one's from... Uh, doesn't say who it's from, but it says fly safe. And this one is a maintenance report. Something to do with the T button being broken, probably. But yeah. Uh, that's all good. They have inventories filled. Pretty solid. Um, let's jump down to the moon and let's try out their rover. I want to look at the bottom of it first, though, because it's not something I'll probably be able to do there. Looks pretty nice. It's definitely beat up. This thing's gone, gone and seen better days. That's for sure. Looks pretty cool. A couple thrusters. Um, two of them seem partially broken. Uh, this is pretty normal for the space pod. It, it actually has four thrusters on it. Uh, two of these ones are broken compared to the zero ones being broken of the other thing. Uh, I'm also going to check the... Okay, I can't access that. It's weird. On every other skin that I know of, like the... This texture here is yellow, but on this one it's actually just completely rusty. So it made me think I couldn't access this, but I just want to wave this over here and make sure everything's connected. It looks like everything's connected. That's cool. All right, let's take this down to the planet and try it out. All right, drive test for this one here. Um, I really like the idea of having a, a battered thing that you start with. I think that's kind of cool. I think these would be a really cool set for like a scrap playthrough to start with something like this. That would be neat. Alright, so there are things that are broken. Uh, you do have enough glass in there to repair this. Your wheel suspension is fine. I'm just going to check the wheel suspensions because that's kind of vital for what we're doing here. This one needs a motor and some steel plate. And you do need a large tube for that wheel. I don't actually know if you need the wheel, though, to be welded up. Is there a motor on here you could spare? Yeah, so you don't actually need the atmospheric thruster, and that has a large tube as well. So there is a way you could repair this and uh, have all your wheels functional. Is there a gyroscope on this? That's something that's valuable to know. There is a gyro, and it is currently functional, so... We should be all right on that front. Um, no hot bar setup of any sort, but you probably don't need one because you're just rolling around. I'm going to leave the wheels um, as is. It looks like we have all wheel steering except for our broken one. Let's just pretend that we took the time to fix this because you do have the materials on this vehicle to fix this wheel. So we're going to just go ahead and do that right away. And now we have all wheel steering and this is a very wide boy so I'm not really worried about flipping over at all even with um, having the rear wheels steering <laughs> that exhaust you're just smoking as you're driving around this feels pretty good to drive give it a, a solid solid grade for maneuverability Did they tune the wheels? I'm just curious. Looks like... Is that strength normal? That, that seems really low. The power... It seems like maybe they did tune the wheels. I don't actually know if these numbers are normal. Well, I'm bad at this game. <laughs> what can you do? It feels fine to drive. Let's take it up this hill. See if we can do that. I'm a little bit worried that this one might bottom out on pointy bits because the wheels are so far from each other. But it probably is okay on the moon. 
it feels fine to drive. It does feel like I'm driving a, uh, a kind of beat up car, which fits the theme perfectly. Like it's not difficult to drive, but you could imagine it being better. Partially if there just wasn't smoke flying in your face all the time. So uh, it gives you another thing to build towards, that's for sure. See how this landing goes, fine. The gravity's so low on the moon that you really don't don't have to worry about bottoming out as long as you don't land bottomed out already. I'm gonna find a pointy bit to try and drive this over and see if I can bottom it out. Like maybe taking the slope a little bit funny. Eh, it's fine. Yeah, so this one seems perfectly fine for driving around. No issues there. Let's move on to the next one. The space pod for this set is a pretty unique design. I do like it. Again, we've got the rusty look. I have to like actually pull my thing out to make sure stuff is actually functional. And you know, I just noticed um, this setup looks extremely similar to the interior of the uh, the vanilla pod. I wonder if this is just a modified vanilla pod. I'm gonna check that real quick. All right, so I grabbed the vanilla pod here and just removed the top of it. And it's, this is definitely custom made. This is definitely different, but the setup is very similar. Very similar. So you got you the hydrogen, O2H2 over here, facing the same direction. You've got the cockpit on the front. I mean, it's attached completely differently. That's a lot of custom stuff right there. The battery's over here. That's on the back. It's all, all kind of like oriented the same way as this one. And I think that's kind of neat. I didn't notice that until, until just now. But yeah, for looking completely different, it is actually incredibly similar, which is a pretty darn good job. All right, focus. We're looking at the space pod now. We've got battery, same kind of place. O2H2, this is on this side. We have a hydrogen engine now on this one. Similar kind of idea that I went with. Oh, they have an oxygen tank. I didn't think of having an oxygen tank on mine. That's smart. That's smart. You are starting in space. Having an oxygen tank is uh, very nice to have. <laughs> So that's good. We've got this little bit back here with the beacon and that, and a bunch of tentacles going different directions with thrusters on them. I kind of like that. I'm gonna jump inside and see what blocks it has, because there's definitely some buried. We've got stuff in the inventory again. That's always good. Hydrogen engine. Do they have a hydrogen tank? An oxygen tank. They don't have a hydrogen tank, but they have an oxygen tank. I guess that's cool. You're not really running on the... Like, you have no hydrogen thrusters anyway, right? So, I guess you don't really need the hydrogen tank for any reason. The uh, hydrogen engine can run directly off the O2H2 generator. Uh, one of these produces enough hydrogen for two engines, I believe. So you're getting enough out of that, and uh, you can also fill your oxygen tank and breathe. Small cargo container, that's very vanilla. I like that. Let's take this for a test flight. Once again, they have the, uh, the burning thruster. I kind of like that touch. It's not perfect. It's seen better days. Moves around pretty good. Again, this is similar to mine. It's it's not fast, but it works. Can I just zoom around everywhere you want. Not bad at all, not bad at all. Do we have anything crazy in the first? That's cool. I got lost there for a second. Here we are. Also creating debris all over. Get rid of that. 
All right. Can we access stuff? Yes. Is it all attached? Yes. Very good. Pretty neat. I like the design. Basic starting materials, basic starting stuff. I can't believe, uh, I think everyone else spaced out on having an oxygen tank. I definitely don't have one. Um, we'll check. I don't think Kitsy had one. No, 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 no. And uh, this, this one definitely doesn't have one. I would see it. So that one doesn't have one. Dang. How do we all miss an oxygen tank? That's like, uh, <laughs> that's a good idea. Anyway, let's move on to the planetary lander for this one and wrap things up. All right, here we are in the Wells Orbital Drop Pod by Remarkable. I do like the paint job. Probably said that a couple times at this point. Well, we're coming in hot. I actually haven't tested or like looked at the blocks on this one to see if this is going to work. I'm just trusting them. Just going to trust them and see how my landing goes. All right, parachute opened. We are perfectly stable, which I guess makes sense for a grid with a whole lot of symmetry. Feeling really good about this. 10 meters per second is very comfortable. It is top heavy but we have auto locking on, so we're golden there. Good landing. Feels about right from a normal drop pod. You got a little smoke here and there. Cool. So the dropping in uh, is completely functional already without having checked it. That's nice. Let's look at the inventory here. We have uh, a little bit of everything, the usual stuff. This is a little bit less ice than you normally start with. I think it's a thousand. Um, so that's a, a minor change. We have a maintenance report. I'll flip that open. You can pause it and read if you want to. I like the little bit of flavor added to each of these. That's pretty cool. There was also uh, really good lore for these, um, along with the upload that they did on the Discord server. So if you're into that kind of thing, uh, there's something to go read for you, for sure. What else we got for blocks? Make sure we can see everything. We got the four thrusters. One of them's a little bit broken. You could probably repair that with the stuff that's left over. A whole bunch of batteries instead of one big one. They went with a whole bunch of small ones. It's perfectly okay. Survival kit, parachute, or detector. A lot of the standard stuff, for sure. I don't see... Oh, yeah. They... Yeah, they got everything. Everything, just a very different package. That it's all wrapped in. Looks pretty cool. And I think that is probably going to be where we leave it for this walkthrough. We've gone through everything. If you do want to vote on stuff, head over to the Discord. Link for that will be in the description. Voting will be in the event talk tab and it will be in a pinned message. If you want to go vote, that's where you'll find that. If you want to join us for future build competitions, the pinned message in that same area will always have the current build competition listed in it. So stop by, come say hi. Build with us, you'll get in the video for sure, and uh, hope to see you out there. Have a good one. We'll see you next time.